Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome to another update video regarding Planet Zoo. Today is a big one. But before we dive in to all the new features, there needs to be a little bit of background information here uh, because if you, you may well be new coming to the channel due to the E3 announcements, so I need to explain what this video is and where it's coming from and um, what the information you're going to hear is. So my name is John T. Sparrow, I'm a uh, full-time YouTuber. I played a lot of Planet Coaster back in the day and because of that I have a really great relationship with Frontier Developments and a couple of weeks ago they invited myself, uh, they actually flew me from Canada where I live over to the UK uh, and a few other people as well to take an early look at some gameplay of Planet Zoo. And the stuff we saw was completely under an embargo until after the E3 announcements that as this video goes out should have just happened. So this video is being recorded a few days before E3 from information I got a couple of weeks before that and it's going to be put out after E3. So there's a chance that some of this has already been shown. I don't really know what they're showing on E3, although they did say that the gameplay demo that we saw wasn't being shown on stage. It was it was just for like media types, behind the scenes kind of thing. Uh, and on stage was more of a just a, uh, a gameplay trailer uh, and, a, and a brief sort of uh, synopsis of what's going on. So hopefully there's going to be some really good new stuff here that, uh, that you've not heard before. I'm really excited to be able to bring it to you and I'm incredibly grateful for Frontier for giving me the opportunity to do so. Um, I wasn't able to record footage there and obviously as you can probably imagine the game is still a work in progress so they're going to be very careful about what they actually release uh, regarding in-game footage so I've made loads of notes and I'm going to be using a combination of screenshots uh, you know just stuff I found on the web and also some planet coaster footage because that's the game I know that's how I know how to play <laughs> so I'm going to be using some planet coaster footage to kind of uh, give examples of the stuff I saw so first things first it wouldn't be a zoo game without animals and we got some new animals that haven't, as time of recording, haven't been announced yet. So I'm going to quickly go through all the animals. These are all animals that I saw moving in the game, walking around, chilling out, drinking, eating, all that. So these are all in the game, confirmed now, uh, and they look fantastic. And I think only one of them we've actually seen already, and that was the zebra. They look fantastic. They're wandering around. Uh, the level they showed us was like a really large um, safari park, I guess. There was a huge enclosure in the middle that had loads of different undulates all sort of hanging out. Uh, one of those being zebras. We also got to see an awesome uh, giraffe. Again, they look fantastic. Uh, they were milling about and there was quite a group of them. There was also a baby one running around and, and sort of hopping and jumping and it was really fantastic. Uh, the next one I saw were chimpanzees. Again, they look amazing. I've actually got a bit, little bit more to say about the chimpanzees later on because how they interact with scenery and terrain, obviously, because they can climb, uh, is a little bit special. So we're going to talk about that in a moment. Also, in the safari area, there were spring box. Uh, again, great looking sort of gazelle type animal just sort of pottering about, uh, as were wildebeests as well. Uh, again, they looked pretty awesome. They had a really great... Uh, animation on their tails flicking flies away and stuff as they do they all these animals look they look so full and they look so heavy and, and real it's let's be honest that with um, Jurassic World Evolution they nailed the dinosaurs so and also they've got a real good history of animals Frontier have you know we connect them all and other Zoo Tycoon games so I wasn't really worried but actually seeing them in the flesh so to speak they look really fantastic and a few more interesting ones then because we kind of knew that we were getting a lot of sort of uh, undulates and stuff because you know it's pretty standard uh, but some really interesting ones saltwater crocodiles were shown again they look really good they hang, they sort of hanging out a lot sort of chilling out by the water pretty slow moving exactly as you would expect them to be. Um, another one that I wasn't expecting, Wild Dogs. Uh, they looked really good. They've got these awesome big, big ears that they have, you know, uh, and they were, uh, were walking around as a pack as well. They stayed together quite well and pack, um, sort of pack systems are in place so they will kind of hang around they will herd and stuff uh, cheetahs we got a very brief example of a cheetah there was one cheetah just kind of chilling out having a bit of a sleep in the sun um, just kind of hanging out we didn't really see much movement from the cheetah and then the last one which is also really interesting was an iguana uh, now iguanas and I'm sure all the other smaller animals sort of creatures the spiders the lizards and all that kind of stuff uh, they work in a very special way so again we're going to talk about that a little bit later on as to how you're going to be able to implement them into the zoos. So next up then is the actual exhibits themselves. The um, the Twitter feed and the Instagram feed have been sharing some really great images of some exhibits lately and uh, one thing you can take from those and also from the information I'm about to give you is that they are completely freeform and this is so exciting and really amazing to see. If you go to something like Jurassic World Evolution or if you go back to other Zoo Tycoon games, Zoo Tycoon 1 and 2 especially, 
exhibits have to be made with a fence and there has to be a fence that goes all the way around there has to be a box that the animal can get placed in there's a gate somewhere on that fence that keepers can come in and out from uh, zoo tycoon takes another step there and you are able to create exhibits as in create the actual borders of exhibits out of pretty much anything you like you can use terrain you can use placeable rocks you can use ditches you can use water if the animal doesn't like water for instance chimps uh, a lot of chimp uh, enclosures are, are placed on two uh, islands you know because they won't swim due to their uh, heavy um, to the lack of body fat makes them sink like a brick basically uh, so they, they like a paddle but they won't swim and uh, the fact that you can use all of these different techniques to create some really natural and really realistic looking exhibits is incredibly exciting uh, they told us that basically all of all animals in the game have a uh, an incline percentage built in basically so they know how much they can climb so elephants for instance they're not very good at taking good inclines so a lot of elephant exhibits have big ditches around them which stops them uh, you know trying to get out but then something like a chimp for instance can't really climb up so you need to have them um, some sort of sheer faces there more like a fence structure that will keep them in or like I say you can use water uh, so that's really exciting especially for somebody like myself who plays relatively creatively uh, we want to make it look really realistic those freeform exhibits are incredibly exciting. The other major upgrade from the uh, the Planet Coaster engine, so to speak, the uh, the uh, the Cobra engine that used for Planet Coaster is water. Now, in Planet Coaster currently, water is pretty much just a sprite. You can use the terrain to make uh, ponds and pools, and you can place water on there, but it's pretty much just an image of water that sits. If you come underneath, you can see that there's no real uh, there's no real water there. It's basically just a, a level plane that sits on top, which is fine for Planet Coaster for the most part, because uh, there isn't that much interaction with water in theme parks necessarily, apart from some water rides, but they work a little bit differently. Uh, in a zoo, obviously water is a key part of exhibits pretty much all animals need at least some amount of water in their exhibits and obviously a lot of them will interact with that water quite heavily swimming drinking all that kind of stuff so with their planet zoo the water is completely volumetric and what that means is basically rather than it just being an image a plane there it's physical uh, you know imagine pouring a glass of water out of a glass onto the floor it splashes around it fills objects uh, it basically acts more like water in real life it's completely volumetric it's completely dynamic that is incredibly exciting uh, that means that um, not only that by the way sorry the vo it's volumetric not just to terrain but to all custom placed scenery as well and that is huge we've seen that image of the uh, of the glass panels there in the hippo enclosure and basically that's confirming that those are those are placed by well they, they might not be they might be a fence but you can place those if you want to as scenery pieces the water will interact with them uh, the water will move against them and and, and and scenery items will stop water so with that you can just uh, if your brains are probably turning like mine are the amount of detail you're going to be able to get into exhibits and how you're going to be able to make them not only water but obviously we already know that uh, weather has been confirmed and one of those weather uh, systems are rain uh, they did show us rain it looks looks fantastic, uh, it falls really nicely, it makes puddles on the ground and again it is volumetric in as much as that it is occluded by both terrain and scenery, placed scenery, piece by piece scenery that people put down stops rain uh, and they showed us a really nice shelter that the chimpanzees ran underneath when the rain came, it was a shelter built out of pieces uh, using the game's piece by piece structure. And, uh, and yeah, it's just, it's so exciting. Talking about uh, chimpanzees and running underneath the scenery, um, you could build, it show, they showed us some items built uh, for the chimps to climb on, like a climbing frame. And all of these pe all of these climbing frames were made out of single beams of wood, single pieces of wood that they put together to make ladders, to make platforms. And the chimps were running all over it. They knew how to climb up. They knew how to figure it out. These weren't sort of stock pieces. They were just made out of planks of wood that people had sit and put together, just like you would in Planet Coaster. And you could put them however you liked. You could make ladders. You could make tire. There was tire swings. I think the tire swing necessarily might be a set piece, obviously, so they got the interaction of the swing. But all of the platforms and the ladders and things were all made custom out of pieces of wood uh, in the game and the chimps ran all over them. It was amazing. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, they are the big ticket things. The fact that uh, water and exhibits can, can be completely freeform 
really, really exciting. But there's some other stuff they showed us as well that also looks really cool. Now, we already knew we were getting a train ride. Uh, they did show us another ride, and that was a Safari Jeep. Uh, it looks fantastic. It took about six people in the back of it. Uh, the one I'm showing you here is just a scenery piece from Planet Coaster, but uh, this one was a little smaller. Um, it does ride on a track, okay? So you can see a track that's on similar to the track rides of Planet Coaster, um, which was slightly disappointing because I, I think probably it would have been better freeform, um, but I'm assuming just like Planet Coaster, you're going to be able to sink the track down and hide the track like we've like we've done with, uh, with other rides in Planet Coaster. Um, but it looked really, really great. Uh, there was a guy driving the safari along and, and it went through the um, the large sort of undulate area and it was yeah really really great. That safari ride is going to be one of the ways that your guests can see the animals and as you can imagine the guests have all the standard kind of features that you know they, they're hungry, they're thirsty, they're tired and all that sort of stuff but one of the new things they're adding is an understanding feature and it's going to be something that sometimes you're going to have to hit as, uh, as a challenge and it's also something you have to keep an eye on is that all the guests come in and they're going to have an understanding meter that they need to fill up as they go around to say that they've learned about the animals that they're looking at and one of the ways you can do that is with uh, a new uh, set of billboards so they have billboards that they showed us in the game and they're completely uh, auto generated in the game you place down a billboard and you can select an animal that it's near and the game will automatically generate a billboard with an image of the animal, uh, the name of the animal, and some information about that animal. Uh, it, it works really well. It's something we've tried to do in Azuri Gardens that you're looking at footage of here, which is a Planet Coaster Park, using uh, sort of scenery and theme makers toolkit items to make it look like a safari. This was started way before Planet Zoo was announced. And we've made some things in Photoshop and imported them in here, but it's really going to be a really great feature for people who aren't necessarily graphically inclined. They can make these uh, billboards down in the game. Game. And not only are they generated and they look great, uh, the guests actually interact with them as well and, and they stop and read them and it gives them that understanding bonus uh, that you, uh, you kind of want to get them learning from a zoo. So that's the guests covered then again. we've uh, I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more about those later on. Uh, but staff, we got a lot more information about staff in this demo as well. Uh, first things first, again, we've speculated because of the different colours, there are staff paths. It has been confirmed that there is a separate type of path that you can place down that only staff can walk on, and you're going to be able to use that to create full backstage areas where the staff can go and get in and out of enclosures and in and out of staff buildings. The only staff building they showed us uh, was uh, it seemed like a kitchen I guess it was where the food is prepared for the animals so they showed us the uh, the wild dogs uh, the, the, the painted dogs area and the uh, they so they placed down a member of staff the member of staff walked into the dogs there was there was a door in a fence they walked through the door and had a look around and realized that the dogs needed some food they then went back out of that door and then they walked to the staff building this is much more developed than a lot of the games where they just kind of pull the food out of a huge back pocket that they've got like a Mary Poppins kind of bag. Uh, so here it's going to be really important about the placement of staff buildings and how they work with the front of house and the, and the rear of the parks. Um, he went to the staff building and into the staff building uh, and prepared some food. Here's the big one. In Planet Coaster currently, all the staff buildings, toilets, hotels, all those kind of things, they're kind of what I would call a TARDIS. They're a little box that you place down with a big black hole and the guests or the staff just wander into them and then wander out uh, with, a, with a new buff. In Planet Zoo, they're still a box that you place down where you can completely decorate the outside of them, but they have interiors. You can see the interiors of these buildings and they look stunning they look absolutely fantastic it's no longer just a black box you watch the staff member walk through the door and inside there was counters and fridges the staff member walked over to the fridge and got some meat out and chopped it up on the counter and placed it into a bucket and then took the bucket back out of the building and, uh, and went and fed the uh, fed the dogs it was really fantastic it got a huge round of applause in the room just because you can see inside these buildings it's crazy the little things that we get so amazed about um, but that was really really good yeah so again they are they're pretty plain on the outside as far as the actual building is concerned so you're going to be able to create the, the exterior of the building just like you would in planet coast exactly how you want to you can make it look like whatever you want but then the actual interior uh, they are uh, there there is interiors that you can go in and they can see them doing their job really really awesome feature uh, the other nice thing they showed about staff as well is that there uh, is going to be multi-gendered staff. So currently in Planet Coaster, you place down a janitor, it's an old guy with a moustache. You place down uh, a security guard, it's a 
younger guy with a mustache. They like mustaches, um, and all the all the you know the people are as uh, as they are. But in in uh, Planet Co- Planet Zoo, you're going to be able to hire male and female staff of each staff type. The only staff type we saw were were like keepers, rangers, I guess. But they have said that there are going to be others. So I'm expecting things like janitors, security, maybe uh, entertainers, that kind of thing as well. But uh, we weren't actually shown those on the day. The last thing I wanted to talk about then is the iguana that we saw, and I'm pretty sure that this same system will apply for other small creatures so snakes spiders anything like that we get in the game Uh, the iguana actually comes in a box Uh, now first of all i actually think this is quite an elegant solution to this problem because i was i was quite concerned when they said that we were getting smaller creatures uh, and especially with the sort of creative level of uh, of detail that you can do in planet coast that looks like you're going to be able to do in planet zoo this the whole sort of placing down every single Bent, uh, you know, bush and tree and rock. Uh, I did worry a little bit as to how that would translate into small exhibits for things like this. I thought it might be a bit too fiddly, it might be a bit too detailed. And I think the way they've come up with a solution is actually really quite elegant. So the iguana comes in a cage, in a case. Uh, it gets placed down. It's small. It's uh, made of glass and it's pretty much empty and again the exterior of it you can decorate however you like you can set it into a wall if you want to you can have it in the middle of a room uh, no matter where you place it the guests will come and look at it and figure it out and then through in the in the main game in the campaign game or the or the, the, um, the scenarios or whatever you want to call them uh, you can level up these boxes to include uh, extra details so they showed like a, a menu option and you could unlock different things through money or reputation or whatever and it would add a plank of wood it would add a tree it would add some foliage etc etc um uh, and i think it's quite a nice way of doing it to be honest because you still have that level of uh, control that level of detail as to how it looks so there was various different plants that they clicked in and out of uh, and stuff like that and i but i think it's not going to have the real sort of minutia detail of fiddling around with placing stuff inside such a small enclosure i think it was a pretty elegant solution um the uh, the other thing they did say though is uh rudy renkamel a good friend of mine and the fantastic planet coaster creator uh, asked if we can still just place stuff in there because obviously using the scenery uh, pieces you know you can pretty much place them wherever you like um, and she said yeah there's no reason why you can't drag something in there although obviously it's not going to necessarily interact with the exhibit itself uh, but you know if you wanted to there's no reason why you couldn't just put scenery in there like you would be able to stick scenery anywhere else there's probably a few other things that I saw that I missed I forgot to write down um, they gave us a tour of the studios where the game is actually being produced and I did see some stuff on the monitors there but unfortunately that is still under NDA I'm not allowed to talk about that uh, but again still pretty exciting stuff so keep it here on Geekism if you are new here please subscribe we're going to be covering everything Planet Zoo and, until the launch and then obviously we're going to be diving so deep into it when it releases thank you so much for watching uh, like I said before this is being recorded before E3 to go out just after the E3 announcement. So if they talk about stuff in E3 that isn't covered in this video, there'll be another video coming out post E3. It's difficult when you have to pre-record. You guys know how it works. Uh, But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have enjoyed it, give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And like I say, if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries, suggestions, please place them down in the comments. And if you just fancy a chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Jonty Sparrow. Thank you to all of our patrons. They make these videos possible through their incredible support at patreon.com slash geekism where you get some little behind the scenes info and also uh, possibilities to vote on future content as well thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one